Hey guys, Will from MachineLovers.com here with a new project that I'm really excited about. Uh, what I'm calling this is Casper, uh, the friendly writing ghost. And what this is going to be is a tool, a service that will help generate written content, uh, marketing content, sales copy, tweets, paragraphs, articles, things like that. And so uh, this is the first video about it. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time, been thinking about for a long time. So I'm going to go the distance with this project. And I want to take you through the very first steps. And the very first steps here are designing the API, uh, getting an API up and running, getting a front end up and running, just the very beginnings of a front end. So this is how I think about architecture in general. I'm going to try and get the very basics of this article generator, not the engine. The engine will take a long time to work on, but what I can do in the very beginning is design the API, get a site up and running, just, you know, just the very basics of it. So essentially what this video is gonna be about is going from zero to one in terms of uh, creating a Flask app, thinking about how to design a REST API uh, for your data product. Okay, so this is a plug for the folks over at RealPython. I'm going to be using this article, Building and Documenting Python REST APIs with Flask and Connection, uh, to start the, uh, start the process of thinking about a REST API. So what does the REST API do? Uh, you, being an internet consumer, being online all the time, know and have used and have thought about REST APIs. Essentially, it's the protocol uh, uses the HTTP protocol to create, read, update, delete, or destroy things. Uh, and it helps generate the structure, essentially the backbone of the internet, of serving data in these, uh, these strings that you visited, you know, your username and then the name of an article or whatever uh, to get that data. And so, this is important that design of an API is clear and precise because the front end, all of the consumption, all of the, the eventual models that we'll build will consume the data from these APIs uh, to do the work that they need. <clears throat> okay, so I've done a lot of following along in this, uh, this great write-up, uh, which you can do yourself, but essentially the crux of it comes down to uh, getting Flask, get, getting connection, and I've done this uh, as usual in a uh, environment uh, that I created. I called it Casper, right? So source, deactivate, uh, and I'm using uh, the fish shell as usual. Um, and so when I say source, Casper, bin activate fish, it activates my uh, virtual environment and that I can show you that I'm using Python uh, 3.6.3. So we're gonna use some of the latest and greatest uh, packages here. What I have running up above essentially is my main.py file is what I called it. And this is where we begin to define the actual app that we're going to use. So we have Flask, we're gonna import the render template, which is gonna render the templates that we store in here, currently just the home HD, home.html uh, just provide it a title just a little welcome page very hello worldish uh, type stuff okay and then what's new here is that we're going to import connection and then make essentially a connection app with this swagger yaml that will define the api so what this what's nice about this is this yaml file this sort of essentially text-based article defines um, the API endpoints. So the paths here that we're going to define is article. It's going to be a get, so essentially read the article. Uh, and then we have the schema for the article down here, uh, which we might eventually move out into something a bit more robust, but essentially says, you know, I've given it a title, body, first name, last name, and timestamp for that article. Okay, so this reads the list of articles. So if I'm jumping around a bit, 
that's only to show you uh, to branch off this main.py file, which which determines the route. So you'll see this in a lot of Flask tutorials, the the first route that you get to, essentially the home page. And what that does is render the template home.html. So then we have the standard uh, sort of Python syntax, if, if name equals main, run the app. And so what I can do from that is if I just do, uh, I could do Python 3 main.py, should be able to do that. And then we get this server, which I'm going to allow these connections on. And so right here we have on port 5000, we can go and visit the site. Right, so I just plug that in and I get welcome to Casper. I get the home.html page of an app. But essentially what we are doing is we want to serve data from an API and we want to serve data from the article API. So eventually we are going to be serving content back to our users. And this is, since this is going to be the backbone of the site, you want to think about this, uh, take some time and think about it. Uh, but essentially I'm going to call these articles. And so I have this article.py file, which I sent, eventually this data will move back to a database. We'll get it out of just typing it into, uh, into the file itself. But this is what the data will look like eventually. So a few things. Okay, so I import daytime uh, and get, get the daytime <clears throat> and get a timestamp essentially. But I also do this thing where I import BSON. And I do that because what I like to do is get object IDs. I want to get something that's very unique. I'm not sure I'll use this uh, ultimately, but what I can do with BSON is get this really unique object ID that somebody won't be able to figure out or guess or copy. It'll be unique either to that person or to that article, whatever I want. And so if I key a dictionary, a Python dictionary by object ID, uh, I know that it will be very unique. Okay, so that's all that is. So in my data, I have title, first name, last name, body, and timestamp for these three articles. And then I have the function for ar in article.py, which is read, right? So this is the request for API slash articles. So this will read out this data um, for the user, for anybody who hits this API endpoint. And essentially I'm just iterating over this dictionary, um, sorting it by the keys and then like presenting it back via the API. And you remember in main, you remember in main we have our swagger.yaml which defines the API routes. So in here we define this paths forward slash article and so here we should see uh, that it's going to be article, the operation article.read, right? So if we visit this forward slash API, which is the base and article, uh, we get not found. Okay, I'm not sure if that's a Python 3 thing, but I went back and ran, started up from just Python main.py and then allowed um, allowed the network connection to go through. Just got a little pop up there and then I'm able to visit forward slash API forward slash article and then see that data from that read operation. So this is all well and good and it's the very beginnings of getting data uh, to a specific route uh, via an API. Okay, and one other neat thing about using Swagger for API documentation. One, it's just a pretty neat nifty site. Seems like it's used, well used and well liked. They've thought about building REST APIs in their design and architecture. But what I can also do is I visit API and then forward slash UI. And from the pip installation, I get this interface just right out of the box, which shows the article endpoint uh, that it has a get 
uh, get request on it. And then because I have specified the documentation in that YAML file, it comes to me right here. So I can see uh, the body, first name, last name, timestamp, title, which will be really useful. I have, I can try out this API response and see that this is the data that I'm getting back when I hit, uh, when I hit that endpoint. So this is really useful for development. Uh, this would be useful as the API gets a lot more complex. So if you're thinking about building an application using Python and Flask, I hope you consider using Swagger. Um, Flask and essentially Python 3 allow you to get up and running with this API uh, with something that you could just start with, go from nothing to something at least. Uh, even though this is baby steps here, we are going to build this out aggressively uh, and I'll document the journey. So. Uh, please like and subscribe, join the channel, let me know what you think, let me know if you think this is an interesting project, and uh, we'll go from here.